Black Girl Nerds. Better shake your booties for Black Girl Nerds. Thank you so much, you both, for your time. Season three, we have two factions that are coexisting in a sense. To be beginning for you, is what is the best version of compromise? Is there a compromise that can be reached between these two factions? Is that even a possibility to examine that in season three? Well, uh, I don't know that... Compromise is something that either Leighton or Wilford are great at uh, when it comes to each other. But um, what I think outside of their particular conflict, what I think this season attempts to examine is that like neither of their ideologies are have, are being particularly successful. And so um, that, that and that's important to look at, I think, and that like uh, there is the. Yeah, they're, they should be learning probably more from each other than they are. Mm-hmm. Katie, for you, for for Josie, now she is uh, part of this faction, part of Layton's group over on the on the Snowpiercer. Not only that, in that new system, being a new love interest, when he's had a previous love interest, how does that role among the train help or hinder her ability to survive or just to continue with her own ideas of of righteousness during this season yeah well I think she um she's determined to help Leighton and the rest of the team find a solution (laughs) whatever that may be and you know they've got this spark of hope um in Melanie's findings um about warm spots and uh they're kind of clinging to that in uh, in the need for it to be true, not just for them, but for the whole for the whole train. Uh, so she's very focused on that and using her new powers as thing in cold resistance to help that serve that purpose. But of course, her personal life plays in, and uh, her and Leighton have a long and deeply held connection between them, and that is at odds sometimes with what they're trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. With, with, us, with that, uh, Devi, back to you, what they're trying to achieve, what, where, do that, where does that lie within the scale of, of, of black and white? Because like you've mentioned in your earlier answer, both of their ideologies have their flaws. So is there really someone who's more on the, the good, bad side than the other. It's easy to to want to root for the Snowpiercer train, but that ideology is also flawed. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's the, the the concept of good and evil is not particularly useful when, like, what we're talking about is survival, right? So, um, and I think, and also, everyone's a human being that we're that we're talking about. You know, there aren't um, omniscient beings on the show, and so. Uh, and Leighton's just like Josie and just like everybody else the the personal life doesn't always line up with with the with the goals of your of your professional political or um, whatever your life outside of your personal life and I think the the prospect of being a father for Leighton has really like shifted his priorities in a way that make him kind of more corruptible than he was before. It's really easy to be ideological when the only, when the only bit of his blood that was at risk was his own, right? Mm. Um, it's very easy to, to, for him, it was always very easy to like be willing to die for a cause. And then all of a sudden there's this potential of, of a child that comes in and complicates things. And now like huge, the his survival is also tied with his the survival of his potential child and that's that's that complicates things a lot for Leighton and I think also also simplifies them (laughs) right it's also like I don't there's there's something that is more important to him than the train and uh that hasn't been true before because it wasn't his life before it was so willing to throw that away right um and so that's that's it it's an interesting wrinkle for him these children, they complicate things. Well, that is mm-hmm. my time. Thank you so much, you all. It's exciting and cold looking as usual. 
Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Take care. Good to be with you all. Beginning uh, with with you, Mickey, for best, it's always a difficult thing when the head and the heart come in conflict with each other. Will, after having that conflict in season two, is the road to navigate survival easier without that complication? Or is it more challenging by not having that person to lean on? Uh, I think what we're going to find in season three is that Till like can't stay away from her heart as much as she would <laughs> sort of like to pretend it doesn't exist and that she can sort of stay in her her head and her fighting and her body. Um, I think there is she's sort of a hopeless romantic, I think, uh, underneath all that armor. And I think that that um, struggle um, might sort of rear its head. Mm-hmm. For 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 you, Rowan, for Alexandra, when you are the the child of such of an, an immense figure, there's sometimes a shadow that you have to step out. Is it possible to step beyond that shadow and own her own quest for survival and her own thoughts of ideology this season, just stepping fully into who she is? Yeah, I think that was one of my favorite parts of this season of Snowpiercer is, um, you know, Alex is, is, has been on Snowpiercer for a while now. She's developed relationships with everybody. She's, um, you know, once again separated from her mom and uh, she's made the decision to separate herself from Wilford. So I think she's really stepping into herself and um, growing up. And it's really nice to ex- explore that um, in her voice and uh, you know, how she's stepping into herself. And I think she's really inspired by characters like Bess and um, just getting to see, you know, uh, the other women on Snowpiercer and work closer with them uh, as Alex kind of, you know, becomes a woman herself. Um, I think that was really uh, a, a big part of the season for me. For sure. Well, they are giving me the yank. I thank you ladies for your time. This is an exciting season. Looks still cold. I'm still freezing looking at the season, but I am very excited to see where both trains go. Thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ido, for your time. Welcome back yeah, for season you. for season three. When I think about these characters, I think about their ideologies and switching si- switching sides and what that means on a spectrum of, of good or bad, if that can even exist, since they both both factions have sort of flawed ideologies. As Bennett now is on the Snowpiercer train, where does that put him when he thinks about his ideology of right, wrong, survival, et cetera? How does that shift for him? in season three um i think that uh ultimately you know he's he's a scientist um and i think that that carries a lot of weight with him um i think we see that from the minute we see him on screen at the beginning of the season he is you know he is out there physically um trying to complete the mission that melanie started when she left the train in season two um so i think with it becomes when when you talk about ideology, um, perhaps loyalty, I think his eggs are in you know the science Melanie bucket, you know basket that he is really, really trying to um, complete this complete her mission, and I think that's a great driving force and you know motivation for this character. Now, there is obviously a lot that's happening you know, around him with a sense of, um, you know, with the the, the constant battle for control and the constant battle for, you know, you know, is, you know, is logic and emotion, you know, you know, what is more valuable and, you know, what should we really stick by um, when we are talking about the lives of so many people? I think for Bennett, it's mostly going to be science and uh, and um, and in you know in this season it, it's also um, mourning, paying respect to everything that Melanie started. Mm-hmm. By being led by science, science is so is so exact. It's not driven by emotion. It's driven by research and facts. 
why hasn't that elevated him into more of a, a leadership role? Just per, what do you, about that? Because we look at what David's character, Leighton, is led by, and we look at the other faction on Big Bird on the other train and what their guiding principles are. But you have this character like Bennett who has a bigger purpose in the sense because what he finds out could save everyone no matter what. Mm-hmm. What makes him not the most, the best choice for a leader, I guess you would say? Not on the poster. <laughs> I think I think that's that's kind I of think, a tough. Yeah. I I think like I I share the same kind of I share you know I I share your thoughts there as well you know I'm I'm not I'm not you know Bennett has if you think about it there are kind of lots of answers there um, but there is so much there is only so much that uh, I guess that they can keep bubbling there's so many there's so many characters on this train you know that they have to kind of keep these stories moving around um and uh and yeah no i i would like i would love to see him go into a more of a of a leader role you bet i guess i exposed my hand that's who i'm rooting for that's probably not what's going to happen no 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 i appreciate I it like i appreciate it <laughs> well i thank you for your time sir you bet. This is you bet three and it still looks cold and i'm still ready for survival thank you so much of course thank you better shake your booties for black girl nerds better shake your booties for black girl nerds